31, let's get going on section 2.6. So section 2.6 has this general title, Other Types of Equations. So far in this class, we've reviewed linear equations and quadratic equations. And this, this section kind of blows the roof off of that and just looks at a whole bunch of other equations. So the other types of equations we'll be looking at, um, we will solve equations involving rational exponents. And when I say rational exponents, again, inside rational is that word ratio. So we're going to look at equations where the exponent on the power is a fraction, right? So fractional exponents. We're gonna extend a little bit more on solving equations using factoring. So we talked about quadratic factoring, but we're gonna move a little bit beyond that. In this section, we're going to solve radical equations, so equations with square roots and cube roots. We're going to solve absolute value equations. So when I say absolute value equations, it quite literally means I have an equal sign and I have an absolute value expression. And I wanna just talk a bit more about this learning outcome because what you see in 2.6, in section 2.6, is going, going to be extended upon in section 2.7. And, and here's what I'm referring to. So if you see an absolute value equation, let's say you had the absolute value of three minus two x was equal to four, right? Totally legit absolute value equation. Fantastic. I'm gonna show you in section 2.6 how to solve that. But where we're gonna go in section 2.7 is we're going to extend upon that and, uh, and talk about what do you do if you have an absolute value inequality. So what do you do if you have something like the absolute value expression here, but you have a less than symbol or a greater than symbol? And that's why I wanna to start to mention what we do in section 2.6 to kind of get you to start thinking about compartmentalizing these techniques. There's a technique we use when you have an absolute value expression and an equal sign. There's a different technique we use when you have that absolute value expression and a less than symbol. And then there's even a third technique we use when you have the absolute value expression and the greater than symbol. So I want you to take what we learned in section 2.6 and just store it in your brain saying, okay, that's what I do when I have the equal sign. And then when we get to section 2.7, I want you to pick up the second method that we use for the less than symbol and then the third method we use for the greater than symbol. So these each have three different techniques and those solutions, those techniques, that methodology, is extended, or I should say explained, in sections 2.6 and 2.7. So we'll start it in this section and we'll extend upon it in section 2.7. So just keep that in mind. And then the last thing we'll do in here is we'll solve equations in quadratic form, meaning these equations don't initially look like a quadratic equation, but we're going to do some substitution to make them look like a quadratic equation. All right, so now I'm gonna erase this stuff because before we get to example one, I wanna go back up to this first learning outcome and just review a little bit before we push beyond the more basic examples. Okay, so here's what I mean. For solving equations with rational exponents, I will come back to this in just a moment. Imagine though you had a radical equation like the square root of x is equal to four, right? Now, if I had something like this, we would go ahead and we would square both sides. You would tell me, hey, Miss A, square roots and square rings, those are inverse operations, so I'm just gonna get x on the right side, excuse me, x on the left side, and I'm gonna get 16 on the right side. And that's totally legit, right? That's a great solution. But I wanna rework this and think about rational exponents, all right? So if I had the square root of x was equal to four, I'm assuming that at some point in your math career, you've rewritten radical expressions as expressions with rational exponents. Again, that means the exponent is a fraction, fractional exponents. So if I wanted to rewrite that expression, the square root of x, I can rewrite it as x to the 1 half, okay? So we have the radical form of the expression, and then we have the rational exponent. And square root of x and x to the 1 half, they mean the same thing. And once you see that connection and that relationship, then the technique to solve these problems is the same. I'm still going to square both sides. I'm going to get 16 on the right side. And if you remember from your, your rules of exponents or of powers, when you have a power raised to a power, 
you're going to multiply the power, excuse me, multiply the exponents. So we'll get one half times two, which is one, x to the one power is just x, and I've still solved my equation. And I wanna talk about this relationship here. We chose two for a reason, all right? One half and two are reciprocals of one another. All right, and when you have two numbers that are reciprocals of one another, they will always multiply out to one. So when it comes to solving these rational exponents, I want you to keep in mind that we're going to use reciprocals. All right, so the technique we use for these more basic equations are, is gonna be the same technique we use when they're more complicated. So I just wanna point out, anytime I wanna solve a rational exponent equation, I'm just gonna use this, this reciprocal idea. And we're going to see that play out, like I said, with the more convoluted examples in section 2.6. So when we have an equation with a rational exponent, it's an equation which contains a variable expression raised to an exponent that is a rational number. So here are a few examples. You can see this one, right, x to the 5 fourths is equal to 32. Or in parentheses, I have x plus, to the, x plus 200 to the 2 thirds is equal to 36 or x minus three raised to the two fifths is four x raised to the one fifth. This is like a double rational exponent, right? I've got those fractional exponents on both sides. So we're going to solve these types of equations, keeping in mind that reciprocal idea, right? Whatever my rational exponent is, I'll raise both sides to its reciprocal because then through the rules of powers, I know that's gonna multiply out to one or at least the exponent will multiply out to one. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. I'm gonna scooch this up so you can see the entire thing. All right, so here we go. We've got x to the three halves is equal to 216. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna just rewrite this to start it out. And I see that I have a rational exponent. I, I quite literally, I have an exponent that is a fraction. So I'm going to raise both sides of the equation to its reciprocal and the reciprocal of 3 halves is 2 thirds. All right, and then using those power rules, right, I'm gonna have a power raised to a power, I'm gonna multiply these exponents, and by design, 3 halves times 2 thirds is gonna be one, so I just get x here, and that's going to be equal to 216 to the 2 thirds power. Now, depending on how comfortable you are with rational exponents, let's, let's simplify this expression a bit, all right? And, and if you don't like what I'm about to do, that's fine. I'll also show it to you on your calculator, but just hang tight with me for a bit. It's kind of fun to, to rework this stuff. So here we go. This I can rewrite as the cube root of 216 squared. Okay. So that's how I can go backwards from a rational exponent to a radical expression. So these are always connected, rational exponents and radicals. And, and the, the basic rule is whatever the denominator in your rational exponent, it becomes the index of your radical. And whatever the numerator of your rational exponent, it's that entire expression raised to that numerator, right? So I have the cube root of 216, all of that squared. So now I'm gonna focus on inside the parentheses. I'm gonna use PEMDAS. All right, what is the cube root of 216? Can we think of a number? that cubes to 216, and maybe you can see it, maybe you can't. All right, but the cube root of 216, let me write it down here. So I'll worry about this squaring later, but the cube root of 216 is six cubed, or I should say six, 216 can be written as six cubed. Cube roots and cubings cancel out. This becomes six squared, which is just 36. So ultimately, my answer for this problem is 36. So that's a completely fine way to get to the answer. And let's say you're like, I'm really not on board with everything after the 216 to the 2 thirds. No problem. Head over to your calculator, all right? And then we'll put 216 in parentheses. And you have to be careful and put the 2 thirds in parentheses as well. All right, so when I'm careful with everything and I enter that in, I am going to get my 36. All right. And I'm never going to take your calculators away, so you'll always have that as an option. But I do want to just talk about this. If you're not careful with your parentheses, right? let's say you did 216 to the 2 thirds, but you didn't put parentheses around the 2 thirds. Well, your calculator is also going to do PEMDAS, and what it's going to do is the exponents first. So it's going to raise 216 to the squared power. It's going to square 216 and then divide everything 
by three. So you see I get a much different answer. And this again is 216 squared divided by three. So you really wanna be careful with what you put into your calculator, especially when you have parentheses. When you're putting it par um, fractions, I should say, not especially when you have parentheses, excuse me, especially when you have fractions. When you're putting fractions into your calculator, you really wanna protect them with parentheses. So I didn't technically need the 216 in parentheses, but I definitely needed the fraction in the parentheses, okay? All right, let's take a look at one, or yeah, one B. So again, I have a rational exponent here. There's my variable down in the base of my power, okay? So I wanna raise both sides of this equation to the reciprocal. Now the reciprocal of 2 fifths is 5 halves. Okay. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and solve the right side of this equation without my calculator, and then I'll check it with my calculator. All right, by design, these are reciprocals, so when we multiply those exponents, all that's gonna be left is the x plus seven, and then I have four to the five halves. So I'm gonna solve this four to the five halves first. So I'm gonna say this is the square root of four, and that's going to be raised to the fifth power, okay? And so looking at that, the square root of four is two, 2 to the 5th is 32. All right, so I get the right side here is equal to 32. And again, if you didn't like that, if you're not as comfortable with rational exponents, like, like 4 to the 5 halves, then use your calculator. But be careful. Please put your fractions in parentheses. And I get my 32. All right, so if I look at my equation now, I have x plus 7 is equal to 32. And when I subtract the seven over, I will get 25. All right, so there's a look at how we solve rational, or excuse me, equations with rational exponents. And keep in mind, we always use that reciprocal. All right, so that's gonna wrap up example one. We're gonna review a little bit more of factoring in the next example. I'll see you in a bit, bye.